Hi. So today we are going to discuss the drilling protocol for the impact airline series of implants, which include the BCS as well as the KOS implants. If you want more information regarding the kit, do watch the previous video where the kit has been explained in detail. This video is specifically for the drilling protocols for the PCS and QS. Correct? So just come closer. For all practical purposes, your primary drill or the first drill which you will pick up is this long drill 1.8. Okay, so I'm just pulling this out. Of course, if there is the patient mouth opening is less and for whatever reasons you want a shorter drill of same diameter, then you can pick the short one. Correct. So you have a 1.8 long and 1.8 short. Now, if you look into this drills, you can see the markings on the drill. For any drill, the marking becomes more clear when you spin the drill. That is universal. Okay. These are laser marks. But when the drill is spinning with your air rotor, the drills become more clear. Okay. The drills correspond to the laser markings correspond to the marking of the length of the implants, which we start from 6 mm, 8 mm. So when you put 6 mm, you kind of know that you are 6 mm in the bone, some soft tissue, 2, 3 mm, you come to know. So 6, 8, 10, 12, and you see this intelligent dent given on 14 mm. Why this dent is given very nicely on it? Because our maximum game in basal implantology happens at 14 mm your maximum work will be 12, 14, 17. Which means that while drilling, because you are drilling at 10, 15,000 RPM, if by mistake you have missed the drill length, you know at least it is less than 14 or more than 14. That is the beauty of giving a small dent exactly at 14 mm. So this is 14, 17, 20, 14, 17, 20, 23 and then 26. Correct. So for all practical purposes, you will start with the pilot drill, which is 1.8 and length. If you are in BCS, you would select on table for KOS, it will be predetermined. For all practical purposes, why I'm saying practical? Because there will be variations. For BCS implants in the maxilla, this is the only drill you require. You drill, place the implant, drill, place the implant, drill, place the implant over. Practical purposes for the maxilla, you would require the first drill, which is your 1.8 drill and your implant. Now, let's say you have drilled in the maxilla. You got your length is 14 mm. Your opposing cortical, but you don't know whether the quality of bone is good or bad. Two things you can do. One is from the kit, you can pick up a 2.8 or a 3 millimeter. So I would suggest you pick up 2.8 millimeter expansion screw, long or short, depending on your convenience. And you start placing it in your osteotomy. Hmm. If this screw goes in with lot of difficulty, what does it mean? That the bone quality is good. good. Which means you will use diameter 3.5. Let's say that you put this expansion screw and the bone quality is so poor, it just slips in. Right. You should select wider diameter 4.5 or 5.5. Yes. This activity of using expansion screw you can do from the kit or if you want additional convenience, you need to buy separately <laughs> what is called as OsteoTap, which is a blessing specially for pterygoid implant. So this is the OsteoTap from 3C Enterprise. All these instruments have been devised based on my years of experience to keep the workflow easy. So someone who is obsessed about saving money, doesn't want to buy OsteoTap, the kit will provide you the provision. Someone who is okay spending a bit more and getting additional convenience, strongly recommended to buy OsteoTap. Read. Next, let's say that you have tried this expansion screw and the bone quality is very, very dense. Very, very dense. Which means that, and you want, for whatever reasons, you want to put diameter 4.5 5.5. Then, obviously, you need to drill ahead. And that is why I'm saying the drilling protocol is slightly subjective, like in any other implantology. I cannot give you protocol that put this implant, which normally happens with conventional implant, 
you put this there put yeah it can be kept in mind but ultimately because you're drilling in bone you need to remember and we are working with single drill system there will be cases where the bone quality is so dense that you may require to widen the osteotomy a bit that case you will put diameter 2.0 simple so you are just expanding by 0.2 millimeter if you are placing in maxilla normally in the sinus area 4.5 diameter or 5.5 diameter your drilling protocol is 1.6 millimeter 2 millimeter and then 2.6 millimeter if you are smart you can eliminate the center drill and directly make it two drill protocol 1.8 lines drill and 2.6 and if you are advanced level user you can eliminate the first drill and directly go for 2.6 if you directly go for 2.6 you do not have the scope of changing your angulation so for beginner i would recommend two drill protocol 1.8 and 2.6 for someone who is really nervous wants to go slow you can add this additional drilling of 2 very simple that is for your maxilla if you are putting compressive implants KOS implants in the maxilla diameter of choice in anterior maxilla which is dense bone is 3.7 diameter of choice in posterior maxilla which is soft bone is 4.1 simple rule length is predetermined again Drilling protocol remains same. First drill and second drill. 1.6 and 2.6. 1.8. 1. 1. 1. Sorry, 1.8 and 2.6. Mm -hmm. First drill and third drill. If you want to go meticulous, of course you can add one step in. Sir, one second. Let the video happen. Sir, correct? Yes. Maxilla. Coming to the mandible, coming to the mandible, drilling protocol for anterior mandible, again, same 1.6 mm drill, but because in the mandible, normally, the bone is very, very dense. Normally, in 99% of the cases, you will require to drill, pilot drill and twist drill. I recommend 1.6 and later on 2.0 drill. If you are an expert, directly you can go with the two drill. Diameter of choice in the mandible is diameter BCS 3.6 always. For compressive implants in the mandible, the diameter of choice is always 3.7 unless an exceptional case. Anterior one the posterior. In fact, anterior you can make it 3.3 also. Sometimes anterior mandible is so dense or you will find situations where the, the crowding is so much and you are doing 1-2 implants only. You can make it 3 point, like if I'm doing in a crowding case, now extract here. Talk to inter implant distance, inter tooth distance bhi to dekhna hai. So 3.3 bhi sort sakte. In that particular situation, you will require only the first drill. But otherwise, in general, first drill, second drill, sometimes even the third drill, 2.6, bone is that dense. Very dense. <laughs> but I would recommend 2.6 drill, you use intelligently because if you end up overdoing it, your implant will lose the torque or you can drill only halfway. Mm -hmm. Whenever in doubt, please, please use the bone expansion screw as a dummy implant. What I mean by that is, we have created the osteotomy. Now you have not understanding should I drill more or no. You pick up your 2.8 or your 3.3 expansion screw, place it in the osteotomy, check. It will give you thorough judgment about the quality of the bone. If the bone is dense and you want to place an implant, you can drill more. If the bone is soft, don't drill more. Remove the implant. Remove and place the implant. Clear with this? Okay. So that's regarding your entire kit drilling protocol for BCS as well as EOS. Clear with this?